NASA's new program for human space exploration is called Constellation. For the first time in a generation, we will be traveling beyond low Earth orbit, returning to the moon, and expanding human presence to Mars. Exploration must be taken in steps. Because we learn from every journey, there is a link between every place we go. Before humankind travels to Mars, there's a lot of work to be done. With every mission, we get smarter about exploration, learning the capabilities of our hardware, learning about the environment, building partnerships, and ultimately reducing the risks of spaceflight through our knowledge gained. Taking our journey in calculated steps, Constellation will first travel close to home, 220 miles above the Earth to a floating laboratory in space called the International Space Station. I'm Pam Melroy. As a space shuttle pilot and then shuttle commander, I've visited the space station three times. The station is the largest spacecraft ever built. Constructed piece by piece in low Earth orbit, it is the greatest engineering feat humankind has ever attempted. The station allows unique scientific research to take place without the constraints of gravity. But you might be surprised to discover it also plays an important part in our return to the moon, and ultimately, humans setting foot on Mars. The Orion spacecraft uh, is America's next manned spacecraft. So the vehicle uh, is gonna be capable of low Earth orbit operations and also capable of going beyond low Earth orbit. This new spacecraft design takes advantage of being able to do both. It's a very uh, flexible design. Orion serves a need for space station. It, it, it brings crews back and forth. It brings supplies, some supplies back and forth, some critical things with it. But the missions to space stations serve a big purpose for Orion as well. It's, it's you don't want to take the new car out on the long duration road trip the first time out. So from a strictly Orion perspective, we get a lot of benefit from these near-Earth, low-Earth orbit missions to try out the spacecraft. When we go to a station, virtually all the functions that we need on lunar for Orion will be exercised. You need power generation, you need thermal control, obviously all the avionics you need, rendezvous and docking, which are critical, obviously, for a lunar mission where you're, you're sending a module to the surface and then having to rejoin with it when it returns. So virtually every system that has to be used for lunar is used during those low Earth orbit missions. The normal crew rotation on space station is getting to be a right around six months. Uh, you know, crews will sometimes be a little shorter to that, but it's a unique opportunity in that the crews do stay for months at a time. As we all know, when you put a human into a gravity-free environment, it's a new environment for the body, and the body is a very plastic thing and adjusts, and uh, so your bones start to lose bone mass. Additionally, your muscles also become weaker because you're not using them every day to fight gravity as you do here, and even your ability of the body to control itself from a sensory motor standpoint, like how your brain controls the actions of your body, has all been developed against a gravity environment. When that goes away, the emotions have to be basically reset. The entire human research program that NASA is currently working with was very carefully reviewed to focus the efforts uh, during ISS on answering constellation-related problems, answering exploration-related problems. For example, we are actively looking at pharmacological countermeasures to bone loss, to exercise and nutrition as countermeasures to both bone and muscle loss, and specific types of training for the crew to help manage their sensory motor problems. And so station is a unique opportunity to look at both how the human changes during that time and how, as a support organization, you have to adjust and support those people to allow them to function when they get to the place they want to go. 